Hey, welcome back to another Code Crafters Challenge. Um, I'll be really transparent. This is not going to be like the normal uh, Code Crafters Challenge videos for a couple reasons. Um, but we'll get into that in just a second. So the very first thing I want to do is um, show you the uh, stage. Uh, you can see that I've completed this stage already. Um, again, we'll get to that in just a second. So there's this quoting module. Uh, what I said in the last video is that we would probably do each module in a full video. So navigation was one video where we did the PWD built-in, CD built-in with absolute, CD built-in with relative, CD built-in with home, and then we were done. Um, that was kind of the plan. <laughs> and then I over-engineered the heck out of my original solution for quoting. I've spent about um, two hours on that solution and realized that it just it was such a tangled mess. Uh, so stepped away. Um, I still have all that footage. It probably will just end up in the trash because it's not very useful. Uh, I don't know. There might be some gems in there that I could synthesize into a, a YouTube short or something. But um, so anyways, I took some step, time away, kind of got frustrated, to be honest. Uh, that happens. And decided to come back to this problem and restart it from scratch. So uh, instead, what I'm going to do is now that you see that I, I got this working, I figured I should probably make a video for it because I would like to continue the series and I can't just skip a video and expect you to have that source code on hand if you're following along. So uh, the easiest way to probably do this would be to just talk through the git diff. Um, I'll make this bigger for you so it's easier to follow. So you can see in the main method, we're adding a handler to our standard out writer. Uh, that's actually used to um, handle something not related to this uh, specific problem, the single quotes and, and double quotes to an extent. Um, but instead, uh, this is um, used to write to standard error when something goes wrong, which means we can actually use our shell and have a fully functioning, fully functioning uh, shell. So I'll show you that too as well, because I think that's kind of cool. Uh, okay, so yeah. So in our original implementation, we had our commands. We were splitting on a sequence of spaces. Uh, guess what? We can't do that anymore. We actually have to parse things because we're working with quotes and we have to handle quotes effectively. Um, and it becomes a little more complicated. So I create, uh, I've removed those lines. And in their place, I've created an arg list, which is an array list. Um, we initialize it with an allocator. And then, you know, we defer deinitializing it because we like to clean it up. We try to parse the command line. So this is a function that we write, and we'll get to that in a minute. We pass in the user input. We pass in the arg list. We're storing it in the arg list. You don't have to pass it in this way. You could always just return an array list. You have options. Um, and then we pass in an allocator. In fact, if I were to refactor this, I, I do think I would probably not pass in the arg list and instead just uh, return one from parse command line. Uh, we check the arg list items length. If it's equal to zero, we just continue. Um, and then we try to get our command. So our command is going to be our zeroth index item from that arg list. Uh, and then we have to modify every single one of these in some way, shape, or form to properly handle things. Um, so uh, honestly, I already am seeing things that I probably, now that I'm looking at the diff and kind of from a high-level perspective, some things that I should probably clean up. Like um, this if right here shouldn't have any exiting at all, really. It should just call handle exit, and handle exit should figure out what it needs to do. But that means I have to modify a bunch of types, and it's just it's it's becoming quite a predicament. But it's something we should refactor because otherwise it gets a little weird. Uh, same with handle echo. You can see the the changes here. There's not a ton going on. It's just trying to make sure that our types align. Um, same with type. Same with PWD. Uh, actually, PWD is a minor cleanup there because we don't actually use the arg, so we don't need them. Where it starts to get a little more interesting is in handle CD because technically you can, uh, with the way that I've got this going now, you can not choose to pass an argument to um, CD. So if you don't pass an argument to it, we default to the home directory, which is a thing that I've realized is kind of common. Uh, again, that uh, I've kind of haphazardly thrown that in. <laughs> this is I'm going on about two and a half to three hours of working on this project at this point, so I need to refactor a bit and clean up. But I honestly, we'll probably push what I have because I'm a little tired and running out of time to make this video. 
Um, same thing with uh, actually running the executable, just a couple small things to uh, coerce our new types to the types that we had in place. Okay, the meat and potatoes where this actually gets interesting is this parse command line function. So we have an input, it's const u8. We have our args, that's again that array list. If you were to write this, my recommendation would not be to pass in an array list. Um, instead, just create one here and return it uh, instead of mutating one in place, which I will probably change that maybe at the end of this video. Um, and then we take in an allocator as well. So we have a, a variable for our index. It's a u size. We set it equal to zero. We're going to increment that as we process the input. So we skip some initial white space if it's available. Uh, if we run out of stuff to process, we break. Um, and then we have uh, some checks, some booleans to determine whether we're in a single quote or whether we're in, in a double quote. Um, we start processing each individual arg separately, and we need an array list to store those in, so we initialize that. We defer deinitializing it because we like to clean up after ourselves. That's a good practice. And then we have a while loop here. So we'll, we're iterating through that input. We're getting the character at each uh, index, and we're checking that character, right? So if it's a uh, single quote or and we're not in our double quotes, then we handle it. And then if it is... Um, you know, we, we say if in, in single quote is not in single quote. Basically, the whole thing we're doing here is we're flipping switches depending on whether you're hitting a certain quote value or not. And then we're making sure that things line up like you would expect. Uh, there's a break case there. So if we're working with white space and you're not in a single quote and you're not in a double quote, so we don't really need that white space. So we can toss it. And then we try to append that arg um, and then we increment our index to make sure that we progress. Uh, finally, at the end, if in single quote or in double quote is true, um, you didn't finish your quotes. So we let you know that you have unmatched quotes. Uh, there are other ways to handle this for the sake of what we're doing. This should be sufficient in the Code Crafters Challenge. But for example, if I were to have a hanging quote and go to a new line, it would not, um, it would not process that right away, it would let me finish closing out the quote. So that's maybe an, a stretch goal uh, if you wanted to tackle that. Um, and then we check to make sure that the uh, arg is um, greater than zero. And if it is, we add it to the list of args. Again, a lot of everything else that you're going to see here is just changing our types uh, or changing to better support the types that uh, we're working with now. Um, Actually, in our case, it's mostly name changes, uh, args to arg, um, parsing the exit code. Uh, I guess you could argue properly instead of just subtracting zero, the character zero from it. Um, some small changes here and there. Uh, handle echo, you can see we're iterating through each arg separately, um, adding spaces where necessary. Uh, and then, you know, CD, we have a minor change here again, which is changing... Uh, arg to or changing args to arg. Um, and that's it. So I, I, mean, I don't know. I'm a little embarrassed with the original implementation. I might show you that as well. Uh, might not, might just stick with what we have. Um, but I did mention that this uh, parse command line getting a um, array list feels weird to me. I'd rather not do that. Uh, so instead, let's just make a minor change here. Actually, a couple minor changes here. So this will be standard mem array list. Uh, is it not mem? It's not. It's just standard array list. Sorry. Let's fix that. So we're going to return a standard array list, and it will be a uh, const u8. And then we can remove our standard array list here called args. Let's go back up to where parse command line is used. Uh, remove this. Args list right there. Grab those. Um, let's see. Go to definition. Paste format. And then here at the end, all we need to do after all of our loops and whatnot is return 
args. Uh, and we call it args, but we're actually um, naming it something different up here. We're calling it args list. So instead, we just want to change this to args. Okay, that should take care of that. Uh, one more small thing I want to clean up. I feel kind of silly that I ran into this mistake earlier, or not mistake, but faux pas, if you will. Um, I have the input as the first argument. It's just generally considered to be proper practice to have the allocator as the first argument in a function that makes allocations. So in our case, we can just swap those two, and then I need to go to where we call parse command line. What did I parse command line? Not sure what I typed wrong there. And then we just want to swap these two, right? So this will be allocator, user input, and then we'll delete in Word. Okay, minor cleanup there. Uh, let's go ahead and commit this again. Uh, minor cleanup, get single quotes working. Give this a push. Give this a force push because I had to mangle with history because that old implementation that I spent two hours on was in the history because I thought I'd pick up where I left off, but it felt easier to just throw it away and I kind of forgot to revert that before starting. So, um, yeah. Nice. Uh, code failed to compile. <laughs> uh, let's see. Function return type declared 72 on 111 error expected return type. We have an error union error set, so I'm forgetting a try somewhere. Uh, 111 is where I should start, so let's start there. Yeah, um, 111, we're returning void. Um, and instead, uh, we don't want to return, if anything, we really want to return an error here. So errors.unmatched quote, let's do that. Error.unmatched quote, my apologies. Give this another go. Nice, small seg fault. Let's fix that too. Ah, uh, really, really clear what the issue is. Not sure how I forgot about that. Uh, we're deinitializing the argument list at the um, end of our parse command line function. So uh, instead, that needs to be defer args list dot dnit right there. It doesn't do us much good to initialize something, fill it, and then deinitialize it before we actually pass it to the thing that's going to use it, or pass it back to the thing that's going to use it in our case. Nice, and after the refactor, our test pass, which is a great sign. So we can take a peek at the next stage. Um, I was coding against single quotes and the first part of double quotes at the same time. So we're not handling like certain special stages uh, or certain special cases here. But you can see like, you know, our double quotes modules passed and the code that we just walked through handles both double and single, at least um, from that first level pass. So double quotes, to an extent, double and single both have an interesting uh, case of backslashes that um, I think we've, we might have actually handled those. Uh, but we have to handle the backslashes in both of those. And then whenever we get into uh, quoted executables, uh, things get even more complicated. Yeah, so it actually looks like our backslash ones failed. That is A-OK. -okay. We will end up doing those in another video. Um, so we'll take what we've got for now with single and double quotes and call it there. So uh, yeah, again, my apologies. I know this is not the way that I normally do these. I normally code them out for you and don't just walk through a git diff and a minor refactor. Um, and my first solution was way over-engineered and just not worth really spending much time on. Um, and, you know, in a way, maybe it is worth spending time on, or at least I should say this. I'm still learning Zig. I've been coding for 15 years, and I still will occasionally, thankfully it is way less common than it used to be, find myself in a scenario where I get excited about something, I jump down a path without really thinking it through or planning ahead, and um, end up in a really bad spot. Uh, like I did wasting two hours on the original way over-engineered implementation for single quotes and double quotes. Um, you know, the, the point being that you can get excited about things and uh, sometimes not have a plan. 
and it's always good to make a plan. Um, so yeah, think that through, I guess. Anyways, despite this being a little different than the normal style of video that I do, hopefully you found this helpful. And if you did, uh, I would love to know in a comment below. Also, in full transparency, um, I code a lot when I'm not recording. And if this video was equally as helpful as me coding it out in front of you, uh, let me know because I could move a lot faster if it is okay for me to code on my own and then just review the changes with you as part of the video. But I don't know, that, that feels weird to me. And if I was watching a video of someone else doing this, I don't know if I would want them to do that either. But I would love to know what your thoughts are. So let me know in the comments below. Um, and if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. What are you waiting for? Come on, we're all friends here. All right, have a great day.